2.2, the graph of a function. We're going to look at uh, graphical representations of functions and uh, tie that into some of the theory that deals with this stuff. Hopefully, again, a little bit of review maybe here and there. Definitely some different things we're going to look at, though, than we've done so far in maybe Algebra 2 or so. But we'll start with the vertical line test. So a vertical line test can be used to see if you have a function or not. So a set of points in the xy plane is the graph of a function if and only if every vertical line intersects the graph in at most one point. So let's look at it here. So here we have two vertical lines that are drawn, and you should be able to draw these anywhere, and you see that this x or this vertical line intersects only at one point. Okay. Uh, well, that means that you ha do not have repeating x's. So what we're checking for here... Whoa, let me reduce the, don't know how that works. Um, what we're checking for here is to see that we do not have repeating x's. Okay, just like last lecture. So this x is only one y, this x is only one y, so this is a function. And you should know that because it's a quadratic function. Same thing with the cubic, okay, only one x for every vertical line that you would draw. If I drew this one over here, again, only one x, so it is a function. Here, you can see that this vertical line intersects in two spots. Well, that means that it's not a function. And I gave you the points here, so if you look at that in terms of a table, some of us think better in tables. So at one, you could be one, but at one, you could also be a negative one. So it's not a function. This is actually very similar to the one that we used in 2.1. Uh, it said something like uh, x equals 3y squared minus 4. It would be a similar shape. Okay, look at this shape. That, doesn't that look a little bit like a parabola that is flipped? And that's because the square is now on the y instead of the x. Okay? And then here you have a circle and the same idea as on this one. So again, oh, I said function. Um, I should have said not function here. So this would be a relation, and so would this one be. Okay. Um, obtaining information from the graph of a function. What are f of 0? Well, at 0, the function is worth 4. It tells you that right here. What is f 3 pi over 2? 3 pi over 2 would be 0. And what is f 3 pi? 3 pi is right here. 3 pi is a negative 4. So they're looking for the y value. So this question is asking you for the y values at the given x. Anybody remember what kind of shape this is from a long time ago? Okay. What is the domain of f? I'll let you think about that. Um, if I remember, I'll write it down. Um, well, the domain of f is restricted because it ends at a dot here and it ends at a dot there. So the domain are the x values that you are allowed to use. And the first x value that it looks that I'm allowed to use is 0. And because it's solid, I am allowed to use 0. And then the last x value I'm allowed to use over here is 4 pi. Okay, so that is the domain. How about the range? Well, the range then are the y values that the function produces. And so, let's see, I get, uh, well, it starts at 4, and then the y values decrease all the way down to negative 4, and then just it rotates from negative 4 to 4 and back and forth. So the smallest y value you get is negative 4, and the largest you get is 4. And again, it's square brackets because you do actually obtain those values. Uh, list the intercepts. Um, well, the x-intercepts are at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 2. And the y-intercept is at 4. And you can write it this way if it says list the intercepts. You may write it this way. Um, you could write the intercepts in ordered pair notation. It doesn't matter. Uh, how often does the line y equals 2 intersect the graph? Well, the line y equals 2 runs basically like this, right? Yeah, it's a little crooked. It's good enough. Let's see, it intercepts one, two, three, four times. For what values of x does f of x equals a negative four? So this is the y value. So where do you get a negative four? Well, you get a negative four here and there. So the x values are pi and three pi. 
and for what values of x is f of x larger than 0. So it can't equal 0. So larger than 0 would be from here to here, right? From here to there, and then from here to here. Now notice that these values are not included because it had to be larger. So I have to treat these as if they're open circles on an inequality. Um, so let's see, I'm allowed to use x is 0, and then all the way down or all the way to pi over 2, but not pi over 2. Uh, at 3 pi over 2, I'm at 0 again, and at 5 pi over 2, I return to 0, but round brackets here because you're not allowed to use those. And then finally, 7 pi over 2, um, the first number larger than 7 pi over 2, I'm allowed to use. And I end at 4 pi, and then again, make sure that you close it with a square bracket because you are allowed to use 4 pi as an x value. Okay, obtaining information about the graph of a function, consider the function f of x is x. Oh, I remembered. I said I was going to give you an idea what this is. Well, I think since it starts at a value of 4 and then it rotates like this, that this is in the cosine family. Okay, I also, quick glance, would say, well, it's probably 4 times the cosine of something, co cosine of x in this case. And then the only thing I'm not really sure about would be the period, and I don't really want to get want to get into that, but it could be anything here, or it could be something in here that it's multiplying the x. So my best guess at first glance would say that this is what I have, 4 times the cosine of ax, where a could be 1, could be something else. Actually, it's not going to be 1, is it? Well, actually it is, because from 0 to 2 pi, I get 1 for rotation. So second thought, I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to say that is the function. All right, so we're looking at this. Is the point 1, a half on the graph of f? Well, if you want to know that, just plug in 1 and see what happens. So 1 divided by 1 plus 1 is 1 over 2. So yes. If x is 2, what is f of x? Well, f 2 would give you 2 divided by 2 plus 1. That's 2 over 3. So what point is on the graph of f? That would be the point 2 and 2 thirds. So here you don't really get a choice. You have to give me something in ordered, point, ordered pair notation, okay? If f of x is 2, so yeah, that's the y value, then, then what is x? So I can write this. 2 is x divided by x plus 1. Let's solve that. We're going to cross multiply here. And that means that I get 2x plus 2 is equal to x. This needs to be here. So I'm going to take away x. So that leaves me with an x. So x is a negative 2. If you're not sure, you can check, right? So if you plugged in a negative 2, would it work? A negative 2 divided by a negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 2 divided by negative 1. So that's 2. So that worked. And then what point is on the graph of f? So keep in mind that this was sort of given in the wrong order, right? So that's the y value, right? And then the x value you needed to obtain that would be a negative 2. Okay? So that point is on the graph. And then finally, in terms of word problems, so these um, equations get a little bit tricky then. So when you have word problems, just read carefully. It says the average cost, C, and then a bar, so that's average, of manufacturing x computers per day is given by the function. And that appears to be a quadratic function. Um, I don't think it is, because I have a division by x here. So uh, that, does, that does something else to this, so it's not a quadratic. And determine the average cost of manufacturing 30 computers in a day, 40 computers in a day, or 50 computers in a day. Not sure why I'm asking you to do this three times. Um, really, all this is asking you to do is, let's see, x computers. So this 30, that is an x. So you would plug in function was defined as c, the average cost of x. So c of 30 would literally be plugging in 30 here and here and here and then finally over here. Uh, and we're doing 30, right? And you would get the following number. And this definitely would be a problem you could use a calculator on. So I've cheated a little bit. I did this just a moment ago before I started the notes. And I believe the answer is $1,351.05. All right, 50 cents. Okay? 
I'm reading to see if they tell me if this is in dollars or not. They actually don't. So I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, so for B, if it was 40, you would just find the average cost at 40. Um, if you want to see if you are doing this correctly, um, I ended up with 12.33. And then finally, 50 computers in a day, I ended up with 12.93.1. So it is money, so I'm going to write it this way. Um, I don't know if you look at the pattern. At 30, it's basically $1,350, and a little bit more. And at 40, it's 1233 And then here it went back up. So it looks like this might be a low point, or at least close to a low point. All right, thank you.